Is this the GR Yaris? Or is this the FK2 Type R? No, it's the new Nissan Note ePower! And it's been some time since a uh, new Note came out and I have to say the new Nissan Note's ePower looks quite an improvement over the old one. I think it's more trendy and sporty looking and uh, you get full LED headlamps up front and this nice lattice grill. Um, you know how Nissan likes to force its V-motion grill into everything? I'm glad that they didn't try to force it in too much with the notes. Instead, the V is quite far apart, so it looks quite different from the rest of the Nissan cars. And you get a new Nissan logo up front. But more importantly, what is e-power? Let me open up the hood and let you see. Under the hood, this looks like any other hybrid car to the layman. Yeah? You see a petrol engine and then the orange cables which denotes uh, electric motor and electric battery. And in a regular hybrid car, the petrol engine and the electric motor both power the wheels. But in the case of the e-power drivetrain, the petrol engine is not connected to the drivetrain directly. What this thing does is it produces, I mean it generates electricity, charges the battery, and the battery powers the electric motor. So only the electric motor powers the wheels. I hope that's easy to understand. Hybrid, both engines power the wheels. E-power, only the electric motor powers the wheels. Got it? To the boot. The Nissan Note E-power is priced from $98,000 to $101,000. The 1.2-litre petrol engine powers the 85-kilowatt electric motor to produce 115 brake horsepower and 280 newton meters of torque. For more details on the Nissan Note e-Power or any other car, head on to sgcarmarts.com to help you make the smart choice on your next car. I like the design of the Note. Um, Nissan calls their design concept timeless Japanese futurism. And the combination of white, black, and red de detailing here reminds me of this anime I watched when I was growing up in the 90s, 80s and 90s. It's called Pet Labor. It's a Japanese mech based in the future. So, you know, futurism, future, yeah, this hybrid-ish EV does hit the design brief. It looks quite futuristic. Anyway, in the boot, we get 340 liters. And unfortunately, there's quite a big load lip here. So, you know, loading stuff might be a bit difficult. And in terms of amenities, there's a light here. That's about it. Does it pass the anti-trolley length test? Nope. How about the luggage test? No. Of course, when you turn it sideways, you can see that you can probably put one big check-in luggage and maybe a smaller check, uh, hand, hand carry luggage. Thankfully, you can fold down the rear seats from the back and they split 60-40 to give you more space. However, there is a ridge here so you know pushing stuff in will not be that easy. Yeah, but what can you expect from a compact hatchback, right? Onto the rear seats. Boop. In the rear of the Note e-Power, you can tell that there are loads of knee room. I'm 1.8 meters tall. This is my comfortable driving position. So knee room is great. However, leg room, I mean foot space is not so because there's a ridge at the bottom here. You can't really put your foot under the driver's seat. And there's a general lack of thigh support. So Getting into a comfortable position is actually quite a challenge in here. Head space is okay. I like that. Visibility is great out this window. It's nice and big. Not that it matters in Singapore, but you can fold down, uh, roll down the windows all the way. Equipment-wise, there is none. There's no rear aircon. Uh, and you really do need to get the driver to turn up the aircon to get the wind back here. Um, no armrest, no cup holders, unfortunately. So how about the middle passenger? First things first, 
you would think that this is not a four-wheel drive car, so there shouldn't be a need for a high transmission tunnel. In fact, there's no gearbox per se in this car. So I don't know why there's such a high reach here. But the moment you sit here, you realize why they have such a high reach. They want to discourage anyone from sitting in the middle because, because the seat belt receptacles will stab your butt. So I would say this car is best left for two at the rear and nobody should sit in the back. Yes, to the front seat. In the Note e-Power, you can tell that the designers tried their best to mimic timeless Japanese futurism. The instrument cluster is fused to the infotainment system. It's not quite like the Mercedes where it's two long screens together. Um, and it's definitely not like the Honda e which has like end-to-end -end digital displays. But I would say points to Nissan for trying to make this car look futuristic with a non-traditional instrument uh, cluster here. You get, unfortunately, you get only two small digital screens. There's still some analog, you know, panels here. It's, it's a pity because if it were a huge digital screen, this car would look very futuristic, very EV-ish. Um, but when we come to the steering wheel, I feel that it is quite futuristic feeling. The spokes are nice and straight here and a D-shaped steering wheel. So, you know, points to Nissan. Unfortunately, you get plastics everywhere. Maybe the future is plastics. Just some soft touch materials here and at the armrest. Um, the infotainment system, I would say it's pretty responsive. Uh, there's hardly any lag. And that's good uh, and there's Apple CarPlay and Android Auto so actually if you connect your phone to, to it you, you won't use the infotainment much but for a car that's supposed to be timeless Japanese futurism I would say that the, the design is a bit dated another dated thing is the aircon controls um, they are very easy to understand very easy to use it just feels like this aircon control comes from a car in the early 2000s or even the 90s. But the really futuristic feeling part is when you come to the center console here with the transmission. The transmission is not your normal gear lever. What you do to change gears is slide back and forth, which is quite cool and quite futuristic. And because this car does not have a physical gearbox, so your transmission actually is floating in a way and it's not connected to anything so underneath the transmission uh, console here it's actually some storage space at the bottom which is great continuing the theme of futuristic and futurism you have an electronic rear view mirror either you can have the camera feed or toggle it into the regular mirror not many cars in this price range actually offer this, I, I won't call it a gimmick, but this feature. Yeah, so kudos to Nissan. And one last thing is, is the e-power drivetrain the future of hybrid vehicle technology and even EV technology? There's only one way to find out and that is to drive this car. Let's go! So, what is it like to drive the Note e-Power? Some figures first. The electric motor produces 115 brake horsepower and 280 newton meters of torque. I mean, name me one other car in the Cat A category that has that much torque. I don't think there's any, you know. Uh, this drivetrain is Nissan's second generation e-power drivetrain. I mean, the first generation drivetrain belonged on the Serena e-power and the Kicks e-power. Um, if you remember my review of the Serena e-power, I really disliked how the engine, the petrol engine, really grunted as it tried to get the car electric power. But Nissan says this second generation is quieter and has more performance. It has a lot more torque. Um, and also Nissan says that it will send, the car will sense 
the road conditions, if you're going through a bumpy patch, the car's petrol engine will turn on to generate more electricity because they think that you know when when you when, when it's very bumpy, it's very noisy, you can't hear the petrol engine kick kick in and it, it doesn't disturb you as much as when you're on smooth roads and suddenly the petrol engine kicks in. So that's quite a smart feature. I, I can appreciate that. Um, as for the 280 newton meters of torque, please watch this segment. So what is 280 newton meters of torque? Let's go. And the traffic light against private hire vehicles. I would say it's very good for getting off the line at the traffic lights. But um, at the end of the day, this is 115 brake horsepower. So when you get up to maybe 70, um, that's when the note kind of runs out of breath and needs a bit of help getting up to 80, 90 kilometers per hour. But off the line, 280 newton meters of torque is intense for a car of this size and price. You will really surprise a lot of other drivers on the road with the pickup speed of this car. Good stuff there. So, ride quality. I was in this car yesterday for close to an hour with two other boys from the editorial team and they made an interesting observation. They said when the car goes over small bumps and ruts, it feels, the car feels quite harsh. The suspension is set up for maybe more handling each type of ride quality but when we went over bigger humps bigger bumps it feels like there's a lack of dampening like the car bounces more than usual so yeah it's quite quite a weird sensation to 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 have in, in a car and I was seated at the back for close to an hour and yes the ride was quite harsh I could feel a lot of the bumps um, and the boys also said, this isn't a car you take from Singapore to KL. And I will tend to agree with them. But in the driver's seat, it isn't as uncomfortable as it was in the back seat. I would say I could do quite a bit of highway miles in this. Um, you just have to get used to the harshness of going over small bumps and the bounciness of going over big, big bumps. Yeah, it's weird. but. It is what it is. So as usual, we have will buy, won't buy, or go try the Nissan Note e-Power. For me, it is a go try. I really like the e-Power drivetrain because 280 newton meters of torque is almost unheard of in Cat A, COE and cars of this price range and the ability to just shoot past everybody at the traffic light is something usually reserved for people who buy cars that are over $150,000 so for a car of this price range where its competitors are running CVTs this drivetrain to me, it's the most exciting. Um, I think there's still some kinks to iron out in the in the e-power drivetrain. If it could be pure EV up to the point that it almost, if the battery almost dies, that that would be great. Um, but when you try to push this car, the petrol engine does kick in, and then this whole car just feels like a three-cylinder car. And um, you know, you win some, you lose some. But good, good thing is the fuel consumption on this car is excellent. Um, I was pushing this car around and I got 19 kilometers per litre. So good, good fuel savings. But why isn't it a immediate will buy? Because you might be thinking of buying this car for your family, you know, to ferry your old folks or your kid and then your wife behind. Uh, the, ride is really quite harsh behind and the lack of rear aircon and the bumpiness really makes it quite uncomfortable but if you are a young working adult and you only have a boyfriend or girlfriend who's going to sit at the side this car is great so yeah that's my verdict go try this car 
Do you agree or disagree? Please let me know in the comment section below. And remember to subscribe to our channel. Yeah, thank you for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.